Okay, I'm going to warn you now that you're going to get a little bit of background noise. Uh, we just just got a lot going on here at home, and, and uh, I can't I can't do anything about it. So please uh, please uh, be, be patient. Uh, that was a good start, wasn't it? All right, so so let's uh, the the last part of uh, section 13.4 talks about half life. We're in 13.4, and the half life of a first order reaction uh, looks like this. This the def it's defined uh, in tro. Half life is defined as the amount of time it takes for the concentration of your reactant to fall to half of its original amount. All right. And so suppose that you start out with one molar at time t. One, two, three, four, five. There's 24 particles in here, right? Suppose it's one molar. At If this is the half-life, which I'm going to call t one-half. It's right here, I guess. Then this is going to go down to 12, right? In, in At one half-life, okay? Now, for from another half-life, I'm just re-duplicating the efforts. It's right here, right? Another half-life, which appears to be 100 seconds, it's going to go from 12 to 6, right? And what's half of 6? 3, right? So in another half-life, it's going to go from 6 to 3. So that's what half-life is. And for a first-order reaction, uh, it's, it's relatively accessible and useful to us. So let's, um, let's look at this. Half-life, right? That's a term that you've probably heard at some point in your life. The half-life of, of a particular uh, radioisotope might help us do some, some radioactive dating of a particular sample, right? So you may have heard it like that. Well, for a first-order reaction, here's the integrated rate law of a first-order reaction. For a first-order reaction, we can derive the half-life uh, very simply by looking at this. Suppose that for the half-life, remember, for the half-life, we have half of the original sample, right? So here's the original sample. Let's say, remember that previous one, it was 24, was the first half-life. I mean, it was the first amount, 24. And then after one half-life, so T is one half, it goes to 12. Remember that in the previous slide? So the natural log of 12 is equal to minus K times the half-life plus the natural log of 24, right? So let's, what we want to do is we want to find a formula for the half-life, so let's isolate half-life. Let's add k, minus kt to both sides and subtract ln 12 from both sides. So this will be plus kt is equal to ln 24 minus ln 12. You remember the, fat, the uh, aspect of logarithms we can take if it's the difference of two logs, same base, we can say it's 24 over 12, right, which is the natural log of 2 is equal to k t one half, right? So t one half is going to equal to the natural log of 2 over k, where the natural log of 2 is 0 0.693 and so on, to 3 sig figs is that. So that's the, that's the half-life. That's the formula for the half-life of a first-order reaction. All right? You'll, I'm not going to derive the first order or the half-life for a second-order or zeroth order, but you would see uh, that it's not as useful. And you'll find, I think, none of our examples. Now, it's, none of our simple examples are going to ask for the half-life of a zeroth or second-order reaction. Okay? So let's do uh, let's do an example then. The half life. So molecular iodine dissociates at a temperature of 625K with a first order. Aha! First order rate constant. K is equal to 0 0.271 reciprocal seconds. What is the half life of this reaction? Well, if it's first order, then we know the half life of a first order reaction is the natural log of two over K which is equal to 0 0.693, because I just calculated that in my calculator, right? Over K, which in this case is 625. Oh, no, 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 no. Oops, wrong number. It's 0 0.271, 0 0.271 reciprocal seconds. And if it's reciprocal seconds, it's going to be 0 0.693 over 0 
one seconds, right? If reciprocal seconds is down here, it's going to be seconds up here. So let's calculate that and we'll be done. Point, let's see. Two, natural log divided by point two seven one equals 2.5577. 2.5577 seconds. And if we're doing this, I got three sig figs here and three sig figs here. This is going to be 2.56 seconds. And that's the answer. That is the half-life for molecular iodine. All right. Okay. So just in way of review, you have a rate law summary table. Remember, please, that rate law was what we covered in section 13.3. Integrated rate laws we covered in section 13.4, which is part of this video series. The zeroth order rate law is right here. The first order rate law is right here, right? And the second order rate law is here. That's what that is, okay? So the integrated rate law, the zeroth order integrated rate law, you've seen that a couple times uh, already today. The integrated rate law for a first order is here. It's the same rate law, it's just rearranged. And the, and the integrated rate law for second order is here. We went through these graphs to show how that you could find the K from looking at the linear version of this um, integrated rate law and the half-life. So by the way, here's the reason why the half-life for zero order is not interesting or particularly complicated because it depends on the initial amount of the concentration of, of A, right? But this one does not depend on the initial concentration of A. So the half-life for uh, first order reaction is constant. It does not depend on A, but this one does depend on A, right? So this one we're gonna we're gonna use. Okay, we would see the other ones only under special circumstances. So you'll be given this sheet or one that looks like it, not this exact same form I think, but all this information uh, is given to you. Actually I posted it already on D2L on a reference sheet that you can print and bring to the quiz or exam. The, um, and uh, hopefully that will be useful. All right.